It's going to go any second because the way we're doing it now is fast. It's super fast. Super fast. I wish super. we had a light that said, now you're on. You know, like, how bing, much is Bing, 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 bing. Now much? you're on. Live from Houston, Texas. It's Ginger Cook Tuesdays, and we're here to teach you how to paint. Wait a minute. I wish we had a light. See? That one automatically kicks on for me. Isn't that cool? Okay, hey, Ginger. Yeah, hey. I'm Are you out get, there? Get, get, I'm here. Hi, John. <laughs> hey, um, pay attention. Were you over there? I'm sorry. I'm just so mesmerized by that. Where's my light stuff, you know? <laughs> Hi, everybody. Uh, welcome to uh, the Ginger Cook Live channel. Uh, we're going to be doing some acrylic painting tonight and talk about how to avoid artist block or how to get over artist block, okay? We're going to do a couple of things, and, you know, we're just going to be juggling in two hands here with the... With the, with the thoughts about how to avoid artist block, and then we're going to be painting, I'm going to hold it up here, these awesome little cardinals like that. See, isn't that cute? And some people thought they were robins. Yeah, some of us thought they were robins, but not others, you know, particularly not me. I don't know who else thought they were robins besides you. But <laughs> anyway, maybe Sammy thought so, but it's okay. Just don't. T anyway, they are cardinals, and they're in this nifty little uh, snow globe. Now, here's the thing. Some of you are looking at that going, yeah, this is all very good ginger. I could never paint this. But you can, we're gonna sh uh, we have a traceable on our website and also on Pinterest. You can also go to Ginger Cook Live, all one word on Pinterest, and uh, go to that very first board, and you'll see that picture. And if you want to just an eight by ten, so it's you know easy enough. I think you could freehand this in, but you know if you don't feel comfortable doing that or just don't want the stress, you know go ahead and we're, I'm going to trace mine on. And I'll show you how to do it. Okay, how's that? We're going to do that. We're going to talk about some stuff. We the reason we're doing this is part of our Christmas in July. Uh, Christmas week, in July. What Christmas in July week week special, and we're gonna you know we talked a little bit about it last night. We finally got our act together, and the stuff's <laughs> up on our website. Not and that you can find it yet, but it's there. Uh, they can find it, can't they? Uh, -uh. I didn't get a chance to put it on the front page yet. But I'm gonna put the link into it. Oh, good. All right. Well, it's there. Just trust us. You gotta find it. <laughs> if you're not sure, write us, and we'll send you the link immediately. Okay. Or sooner. If, or sooner. <laughs> <laughs> So anyway, so let's talk about that. So while we're chatting, what we've got to do is, is get a canvas painted the proper color. So John, if you would be so kind, and John is, I, that's John Little, our executive producer, a business partner, and good friend in gingercooklive.gallery. Ooh, and I've, he's our, I, I moved up to good friend. Yes, isn't that good? That's cool. Yes, <laughs> my mother would be so proud. So anyway, um... <laughs> <laughs> I've never been a good friend before. What does Ginger's shirt say? Five out of four people have trouble with fractions. Yes. Yes. You Are you part of my group here? <laughs> <laughs> you part of our I, four? I pretty, I pretty think, uh, yeah, I, I think you are. Yeah, okay, there you go, see? Um, so anyway, uh, that's what, we're going to have a fun time tonight. And don't worry about John, you know, he, he, uh, he and I have a good time going back and forth, and uh, he makes me laugh, and, you know, that, that's worth a lot, you guys. Besides, he makes all those buttons go. There'd be no show without him. So let's humor John, right? Nobody upsets John. Don't upset me because I'll turn it off the I'll turn off the cameras. Okay. So now that now are we down to the table yet, yeah, John? Yeah, we've been down at the table. That's well, why I'm over here rearranging. Oh well, you've got to tell me these things. Oh, sorry. Yeah. So uh, what I put out the only part of the paint I've put out so far because we just don't point in getting my hand in it if I don't need to, is that uh, we're going to grab up uh, some blue, ultramarine blue, and burnt umber and make a dark color and a little tiny bit of red, okay? So there we go. We've got this sort of reddish brown color. I'm going to use all this paint for this. And I'm on a little 8 by 10 canvas. Now I'm going to just scrape it up like this. We're going to take a fairly large brush because I don't feel like spending all afternoon painting this in. So look here, this will even be faster. You'll be so impressed. This is a what? Number 12 ruby satin. You could use a 10 too, but this is a ruby satin silver bright brush. Um, it doesn't mean it's a frickly smart brush. It means it's squared off, in case anybody wonders what the bright means. I don't know who who was the bright-eyed person who came up naming this stuff. It makes no sense whatsoever. But, um, you know, you know, in the olden days, like back in, uh, you know, the you know, 1500s and stuff, when uh, Valaquez was uh, you know, painting, um, people were making their own brushes. So I guess we should uh, be glad we can go to the art store and buy some things, right? And uh, we're not having to, you know, pound, you know, you know, make the colors and all that stuff. And that's why the artists took on so many apprentices, is they taught them how to do all the grunt work so they had to keep making brushes and grind paint, you know, under the guise of, I'll teach you how to paint this, you know. You know, just keep keep working. 
So anyway, uh, you'll see how fast this is going, this sort of down and across movement that I'm doing, almost like an X or down and across. And you'll notice how fast that this, this painting was covered. Someone says, how long does it take you to paint something? Well, look, if you were doing a big painting like this snow scene behind me, incidentally, can you see the holiday wreath? Can you see that? This oh, is yeah. Our, all right, incidentally, that's a holiday wreath that's full of paint tubes and, um, and paint brushes and stuff. And if you want to know how to make that, we actually have a video on YouTube on how to do that wreath. If you're all inspired now, if you're getting into the Christmas spirit, and you're going, well, why, why, what's this business about Christmas in July? Well, there's actually 160 shopping days left until Christmas. 100 what? 67. Is that what you said? That's right. I you remembered. I remembered, yeah. It's just you made such a point about how, how at dinner that I was sort of wrong, so I remembered. You know, it seemed, seemed like a, it seemed important to you that I have the facts. All right, so this is what the deal is. And you know how terrible it is to get in this rush. So we're going to, one of the ways to avoid artist block is to not put pressure on yourself to get something painted. You know, there's nothing worse than having to paint under a deadline. Now, Christmas is far enough away where you can paint this with ease. It's, uh, just take a big breath and say, ah. Oh, it, um, it doesn't matter, because that's one of the things I like to tell people is just, one of the first things is to just um, chill, you know, to try not to, to, try not to um, you know, get under any kind of pressure to get something done. And, of course, you know, painting, and we have a whole holiday series of, uh, of paintings on, on YouTube and, uh, you know, all kinds of snow, nifty snow paintings. And so this, is, you know, so it kind of gets you in the mood to paint this. Also, we're going to be learning some stuff on how to do blending uh, how to make some, you know, fun things with snow, all kinds of great things. Now, here's the brush. I'm going to go ahead, still got a lot of paint on it, and if I were to just go ahead, just, um, I, I showed this last night, but you can't believe how much paint these brushes carry. I mean, look at that. I mean, I haven't gotten any more paint, but look at that. See how it's just um, covering all that in, and all the time when I used to teach at painting parties, I would see people paint their canvas you know, the sides first, um, particularly, and this is what really makes a difference, is uh, if you're doing a sky or something, if you start fooling around painting the sides, you'll run out of the right sky color, and you may not have enough to mix it again correctly. Just wait till the end, till you're done. And then do you have to paint the bottom of it? Chances aren't no one will ever see it, but if you're a sock folder like this, you know, maybe <laughs> you want to paint the bottom just because it makes you happy. I don't know. I had an art agent who was just annoyed if I didn't paint the bottom. You know, and I pointed out to her that um, people wouldn't see it, and I, she felt that that was not a valid argument. So there it is. I still think it's a good one, but what, what, you know, she was the one selling this stuff. She had to, she had to be a believer. All right. So now you see how this is all shiny, right? Now we're going to do something before else, before anything that you wouldn't think of. I want to just say, take for a minute, just imagine that about uh, you know four fingers up. If, if I were just kind of do a light little line like this, okay? About four fingers up, everything above here is going to have some snow in it for a minute, okay? So we're going to do the snow first. Wow, that is so cool. So how are we going to do the snow? Well, we're going to take a toothbrush like this, and we're going to wet it, okay? And now we're going to tap it off on a rag like that, and then we're going to wet it one more time. Do that two times, okay? Two times is a charm. Now, everybody's with me. We're going to take some white paint, which we'll put over here, and just put some white out, titanium white, and a little bit of a mister bottle, and we'll mist it, two little mists like that, and then we're going to take the toothbrush, can you see my palette here, and we're going to scrub it around like this with little circles and mist a couple times like that, little circles like this. All right, now we're going to tap it off on the rag, you see that? Now I'm going to move everything out of the way, I don't want covered with paint which is every, pretty much everything I've got here. So let me just do that because I don't want anything covered with paint. All right, so now I'm going to hold, hold the toothbrush down at an angle. I want you to see it. And I'm, one thing you could do, huh, well, all right, let me just show you. Just in case you're a sock folder and particularly neat and don't want everything in your life wrecked, you could just sort of, you know, kind of surround your picture with some towels if you feel like you needed to build a wall or something, okay? All right, everybody's happy with that. Now we're going to hold it like this, and we're going to run our fingernail over the brush, and we're going to do it very fast. I actually met people that have a hard time doing this. It's amazing. This is not hard. If you have to, practice on something, okay? So we're going to come down like this, and we're going to create snow in our snow globe. We don't need very much, just a light dusting of snow like that. See? 
That's all we needed. And then um, there, we need some more. There you go. Perfect. Now, brush goes, toothbrush goes in the water. Now we're going to get out the hair dryer and we're going to dry all this, okay? Because remember, our snow globe is going to be in here and we'll paint over these corners again, okay? But remember, here's what we're painting, okay? So you're with me. Here's what we're painting and you see how, where we need the snow, right? Does that make sense? Oh, you're going, that is so cool. I, I know I'm hearing some comments like that, even if I didn't hear them. All right, so what happens to the palette knife? It goes in the water too. Out comes the hair dryer. John, do you have anything fabulous you can tell these guys while I'm drawing this, uh, this uh, canvas? Um, sure, Ginger. I'd be happy to say something. All right, so John's going to mute me. And remember to unmute me at the end. We'll, we'll all well, remember that. Everybody remember to remind me to do that. All right, so I'm going to hold it really close before you mute. Really close, not touching, but really close. And sometimes it's helpful if you can make like a little shield. You can take something like a ruler to, or a piece of cardboard and push the hot air back. Okay, that's a fast way to dry something. Or, you know, even put it in a cardboard box. Ooh. That will do it. So you just want the air kind of surrounding, kind of the way the old, remember, some of us remember you used to go to the hairdresser and they'd sit you under a hood with your hair all up in curlers and the hood focused all the air on your top well, of your I head. I those, yeah. Well, it's the same idea, you know, just um, like that. So a hair drying box. <gasps> wow. Okay. Ooh, here we go. Marketing idea. All right. Here we go. Ready? So, so I'm supposed to mute. Oh, okay. All right. I guess I'm supposed to mute her now. All right, while she's doing that, I put a link up there for the special. There it is there. The guys are, guys, that's uh, Chester and Sammy. I'm just going to put the link in one more time. There's the link for the specials. Right now, you can join for a seven-day membership for $4.95. Or if you are a current member, we have a special um, European Village piece. The toy toy shop. Let me change this name. Um, so that way, and it's also for four ninety five, limited time only. This is these sale. This sale price is through July twenty fifth. Get it? If you go to the page that I put in there, you will see a countdown counter. I put the link in there one more time. For I keep doing that periodically. I think I put it in there. Oh, yeah, I did. It's in there twice. And she's back. Right. Unmute me, please. And let me, wait a minute. Let me turn off the boys. All right. All right. So, John, what I need is the, is the transfer paper, please. Okay. Transfer paper coming up. All right. Now, if you don't have any transfer paper, what you can do is take a piece of soft chalk and smudge the back of this, all right, and then take like a little piece of cotton and then smudge it all in and do that two or three times with a light color. And then I think uh, probably white's fine. And um, uh, we're going to use transfer paper because it's less messy. But you don't have to have it. It's a, like a, you know, everybody pretty much always has soft chalk, you know, so that works too. I wouldn't use green or anything. Try to keep it like gray or, you know, off-white. We're going to go yellow because the white is not in here. Okay, so I guess we're going to go yellow. Let's see if yellow works even. Yeah, then one of the, let's, let's check that first. I think we have a pen somewhere here. You want to use a pen. Oh, let's see. Let's just check check that. Oh, yellow works. Okay, so okay. the first thing we're going to do is um, align our picture on the it's an 8 by 10 and we've cut this out 8 by 10. Put that I want the top of the snow globe right like that, okay? And then I want to take some tape and tape that down. The reason being is you don't want this to move. That makes sense, doesn't it? So, like I say, we don't want this to move like this. So here I'm going to put this like this. And I'll put a couple little pieces of tape on each side. So far, so good, yeah? All right, like this. Make sure that, make sure that you've got it, you know, lined straight up and down here. Okay? This is fun. Don't you think this is fun? So anyway, we're talking about, you know, how to avoid, um, how to avoid, uh, uh, you know, artist block. So, uh, let's see, I think I need to, that's not going to work. Never mind, Ginger, you, sometimes you just didn't think about the, think that through enough. Okay, so I want to put this uh, transfer paper, kind of slide that under here, because I didn't want to cut it 8 by 10, obviously. If I can, you can use this transfer paper over and over again. This is by us, who? Sorel. And you can buy it in a, like a wax paper type roll, all right, which you can do. My problem with doing that is, though, that um, 
that that's such that's overkill. I mean, you could have it, you know, the next twenty years, you probably wouldn't use it up because you can use this stuff over and over again. I like the part that's in these little um, in these little sheets like this because you can use it over and over again, and it was like five dollars. And I think we do we have a link on our on our uh, affiliate link? Do we? I on think this? we. I don't know. We don't remember. But anyway, we got it on things Amazon. We're working on. You know, things, you know, these things it seem like such a great idea. You should do that. Let's see if that <laughs> transfers. Did it? Um, yeah, it did. Okay. So now, what if you were going to make this bigger? Well, look, if you're going to make this bigger, um, you know, find something that's a nice and round thing that goes with whatever other nice and round thing you, you've got going there. Maybe a pot lid or something, something, make a circle and, you know, kind of, you could probably just freehand this in. I don't know that you need to. Um, this is pretty basic stuff here. With our, um, our 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 little um, uh, stand and everything, it's just all like little little tongue depressor things with curved edges. It's really very simple if you break it down into the basic shapes. So while we're chatting about that, let's chat a little bit about um, uh, what that takes to um, uh, avoid artist block. Okay, so one of the things that you want to do uh, is one of the things that will help you is if you, when you're painting, you can get into the zone. Um, and I don't know if you guys know what I'm talking about, but getting into the zone is where time just sort of stands still and you don't know any time has passed at all. And I've got a good story about that. One of my good friends, and I was kind of laughing with John today in the, on the way home because he said, what are you going to say? And I said, well... I'm going to tell them about my good friend, and uh, she and Cinnamon and I had gone to France, uh, you know, for for one summer and for painting for six weeks, and you know, driving around finding things to paint. It was really a lot of fun. Okay, I can't say enough about how much fun we had doing that. So Kathy is an, a watercolor artist, and she came along, and we there was we rented this little three bedroom house, and actually I rented it and just invited her to be my guest in the uh, residence and it was really we really had a you know good time and the uh, one day uh, Cinnamon and I had gone down to into the town and we left Kathy busy painting she had something she was working on and she wanted to be painting and when we came back it was after dark and that all the lights were off in the house and here she was painting and, and it was pitch dark in the room I'm going oh, what are you doing I'm in the zone. I was thinking, what zone is that? I've heard of this zone for art before, but you know, this is like the twilight zone. Really, <laughs> the zone? I mean, so I just don't want to go, you know, do you, you know that the lights are not on? Oh, yeah. Thinking, huh? well, anyway, I'm not talking about getting that far zonk because trust me, she doesn't take drugs or anything. So it wasn't like, you know, I thought she was high. I just, I really didn't understand what was going on at all. But, but there is a time where time, she had not noticed us even being gone, and that is a great thing to have happen when you're painting, is to be able to find that zone place. But here's what happens. If you schedule your painting time where there's, um, where you know that you're going to have to pick the kids up uh, you know, off the baseball game, or you're going to have to stop because something other important thing is happening in your life in about 30 minutes, it, you know, you, if, you, if you shorten your time, about when you can paint, then it's not much fun to be in the zone. I got to tell you, this just takes all the fun out of it. All right. So let's see how am we doing here. Yeah. Oh yeah, this is pretty good. How we do here? Yeah, that's actually probably more, as much information as I need. You really, honestly, it's a twig. I mean, how perfect do you have to make it? You can, you know, at the part, point where you get the the birdie feathers in, you should be in good shape. Okay. So anyway, that's my thing. So find some time that that'll really help you. So then this is the trick. Um, it's great to be one of my friends because all your secrets just are told to the world. You know, everybody wants to hey, be wait, my wait. best friend. You told me I'm your friend now. I know, and you're next. <laughs> but anyway, um, here's, here's what I'm saying is, is that, uh, you know, another example of that is you've got to make time for yourself, all right? This is really important. If you're not making time to paint, it's, uh, it's, it's, uh, if you just, you know, just like you make time to eat three meals a day, 
have a time when it's your time to paint. And one of the ways that's really going to help you to, to, to make that easier is have a nice place to go paint. Now, I say that as not being a sock folder. We're talking about those who have to watch some other videos to see what the reference is. But, um, yeah, go figure out which one we started with that comment. Um, I think I'm pretty good here with my birds. I think I've got, uh, do I have the top of the head here? I think so. Top of the head here like that. I think I've got my birds. So we can be painting the birds in while you get this. So anyway, my good friend Kathy is, um, was one of those people that uh, is always busy. And it's good. She's always busy. She, uh, you know, she's I've always been uh, sort of retired from the, you know, and both her and her husband are retired. She's been retired for a number of years. But she always has something to do. Like, are you going to paint today? Well, I have laundry. Well, doesn't the washing machine wash the clothes? What, what are you out there on a rock? I mean, what's the deal? Well, you know, then I have this. And there was always, it seems to me, I've never met a person in my entire life had more reasons not to paint. Honestly, I just, Aunt Susie needs me. I think I'll fly up to Kansas. Or There was always something, okay? So she's a wonderful artist. In fact, she even bought herself her own art gallery. I promise you, she bought herself an art gallery. Look at that. Isn't that just cool? Are you impressed? Look how that came out. Isn't that neat? Don't you love that transfer paper? So Kathy, she bought herself her own art gallery. But it was an hour and a half from her house. So she's an hour and a half driving because one of her friends also needed the art gallery and they kind of went out together and the other lady lived out that, that way. So she's driving an hour and a half. So I said, did you paint today? Well, no. I was a little tired after the drive. Well, no kidding. Then she had to drive home, okay? So then they bought a house out there and did you paint today? No, we're working on the house. I mean, I never <laughs> saw anybody had more reasons not to paint that like to paint. I mean, she loves this, not that she wants to. So then finally, what we did was, uh, when I first came out, this is what my good friends have, did. When John and I first started, all my friends signed up for my classes and paid me. I mean, they didn't ask for a gift or anything, just did it to support me, which I really appreciate. And I certainly appreciate Kathy doing that. But of course, she never got around to using it because she's always busy. But you know, her tension was there and that she'd say, well, I was gonna paint that. I really like that picture, I need to paint that. But this and that happened and there were always legitimate reasons why she hadn't done it, okay? But uh, nonetheless, uh, she hadn't, okay? So, gosh, there's a big mess on this one. Are you moving my paper again? Well, I'm trying to figure out why you might have seen it. What did you do? I give up. Oh, why? You, you move over. How do you keep moving over? I don't know. Th this is, see these two here? Yeah. Palette between these two. You move. Uh, okay, maybe we need to put big X's there or something. <laughs> I have so much tape on this table. Who knows? Okay, so here's some yellow fingers. That's not great. All right, so anyway, that, so she, so then, you know, time goes by and, um, and her birthday came up, and I said, you know, I really feel bad. She paid that money, you know, a couple years ago, so you have to use it. So I went ahead for her birthday and said, let's just give her, you know, let's just extend her time because, you know. So yeah, we got that. So we actually not only extended it, we gave her an extra six months, right? And um, she hasn't used it yet. <laughs> she hasn't used it yet, but she wants to. But then something, her life gets in the way. So I would say one way not to have artist block is to plan some time for yourself. That's the moral of the story. Plan some specific time for yourself and make sure that you take it because it's real important. Now, one of the things we're doing is we're putting out two different reds in this. Uh, we want our naphtha crimson and we want our cad red medium for our cardinal. We want both the reds. And uh, we want some burnt sienna. I'm going to put make sure you know the colors we're putting out. And we're putting out phthalo blue and ultramarine blue, okay? Those are the colors we're putting out. And if someone says, I wish you would just put the colors you use on the front of the video. Listen, you guys, we use the same <laughs> colors all the time. I mean, you watch one video, it's pretty much the colors. You know, we, we don't have that many. In fact, I even have a video on what colors I do have, things that are nice. You know, most of the time, sometimes we won't use purple. I tell you, we always use white. You know, it's a good thing to have, you know, that kind of thing. No, no, um, wait. You have the key did not use titanium white. What? The key lesson? Oh, the, the key lesson. Key. The key lesson didn't use titanium. That's true. That that lesson of the key. That's the Let's first show people time that. that I have edited one. I had to go through it several times looking for what paint you used, and there was no titanium white anywhere. Yeah, I used the mixing white on that one. Yeah. yeah there's no white. Okay. So you got to see. We've got this. Um, this will be fun. I know that we're. It seems like we're just fooling around here, but look, see, the the, the whole painting's almost done. Aren't you impressed? So. <laughs> <laughs> Except for the color part, don't worry about well, it. Well, it's the color part, but I mean, look, you know, this was this was the hard part you're all worried about, right? So we got that done, right? So here's some phthalo blue and put some ultramarine blue back up there. 
put a little ultra. So anyway, so here's the thing about this artist block stuff. Okay, so one of the things, one of the reasons it's very hard sometimes to get excited about painting something is because, um, quite frankly, you left the studio in such a mess you just can't face it. So what you should do, I, I learned this from an art. I used to hire this girl to uh, work with me and run my uh, Jacle machine and do all my computer ads and stuff years ago. She was one of Cinnamon's friends. They were in college. That's how long ago this was. And Shelly, what Shelly would do for me, and I started to do for myself, was when I was, she, when I was done with the picture, she would put all my paints, all my paints, fix up the tube, run the tube, um, run the tube squeezer, so that I, you know, all my paints were in nice order, and they were all in a box, in the color, ready to paint the next day. Everything was laid out. The brushes were all laid out and dried and there was fresh water waiting for me to paint the next day. And that is so nice. And so uh, even if you're not a sock folder who might have a tendency to want to do that, um, if you can have your, you know, your paints on hand, have an inventory, make sure you have your materials before you start. That's really important. Can't say enough about that. And never, ever run out of white. Yeah, just, it's just really kind of, well, you know, then you're not painting. But So th that's, that's a couple of things you can do. And then the other thing is, is let go of this idea that uh, we're going to, speaking of white, we're taking a little bright brush here. I'll finish that thought in a second. This is number four Bristol on, and we're going to paint the, you know, yellow paints happily over white. So we're going to paint this, uh, this little cardinal here, this little, our little girl cardinal. She gets painted white here, so we're going to paint her white. So anyway, um, let's see what we were going about. Yeah, so lose the idea that this picture has to go somewhere. Well, gosh, I'd paint that, but I don't know. I, I don't know where I'd hang another thing in my house, or I don't have, um, you know, cardinals aren't my thing, or, you know, I don't know. I'd love to paint that so pretty. What would I do with it? Listen, paintings find their home. Like, you know, water seeks its own level. Paintings have a way of finding homes. Uh, I don't give that a thought. If, you, if you're not sure, don't paint it so large. Don't paint the biggest thing you've got. Paint it 8 by 10 or 6 by 8. Paint it small so you have the pleasure of painting it and the accomplishment. But don't worry about what's going to happen to the painting. Uh, every once in a while, someone will, might say to you, this, this happens quite frequently, gosh, we have a charity. We're looking for somebody for, you know, for whatever they're raising money for this week. And we heard you were an artist, heard it somewhere in church or wherever they heard it. Someone told them. And um, word gets out fast. And, um, you, you know, maybe they wanted it as a donation, maybe you ended up as a gift, whatever. Maybe you end up selling it on eBay, you, you post it on Pinterest. And here's the thing, you can always post it on a Facebook. And here's what happens with Facebook. There is a rule on Facebook that's never nice to say anything crummy about anybody else's artwork. So you're going to have, you know, your 2,000, 8,000 friends, I'll tell you what a genius you are. How good is that? I mean, how many people? And they can't just come up one day and say, did I tell you, by the way, Carol, you're a genius? No, because, I mean, how would they know you needed them to say that? But if you post your painting up there, then everybody feels obliged to say something nice to you. And so if you, the more you paint, the more nice things people say to you, and that kind of gets you out of funk and gets you more inspired, and you have less artist block because it's always nice when people say nice things. And I know that sounds a little self-serving, but, um, but, it's, uh, you know, but I'm just saying, consider it, yeah? Consider it before you, you, know, you discard the idea altogether, okay? That, uh, that that's a good thing to do, and it's nice to have, and, you know, when you're on Facebook, say something nice about somebody else's artwork, too. You don't know what horrible thing has happened in their day. Um, you just don't know, and uh, maybe the one kind word you had, you know, is getting them through it. So, you know, everybody says, some people say they hate Facebook or whatever. I think it's a, I think it's a great public service, Facebook. Okay, so that's our white cardinal, and that can be drying while we're doing other stuff, all right? Everybody's happy with that. He's going to be yellow soon, but he's going to be sitting there. And I guess as long as we're painting it, since we have to do layers, let's take a little bit of red and let's paint this one. Isn't that pretty red? I'm going to paint that one right over the... I'm going to paint this one in red. We've got to get some birds in so you'll feel all happy, right? I'm going to put these little birdies in. All right, so here we go. And this little, I love these little Bristol on brushes because you get such a nice edge with them. Okay like that. Here's this little bird. We'll leave a little spot here for him. It's just John thought these birds were awfully fat, but you know, some birds live better than others. That's all I can say. Well, it's winter. They got their winter weight on. They got their winter weight on because you just don't know when the next little birdie meal is going to happen. So that's something to consider, so how not to have artist blocks. See, aren't you feeling inspired now? 
so that you're going to paint, so that um, not only can people say nice things to you on Facebook, but, um, but you can say nice things to other people, and you'll have the pride of it. And the thing of it is that it doesn't have to be, you know, you're learning. So even if you, even if the painting that you did didn't come out as well as maybe some others you did or you found it more challenging, that's okay. We know that, for instance, that um, painting is one of the few things that reverses aging in your brain. So even if you're doing something very challenging, you can sit to yourself, well, you know, um, at least I still know that it's not good, right? <laughs> I mean, come on, something fun like that. Or just know that, uh, that, you're, that you're really, it's, it's like going to the gym, except you're in your house and you didn't have to even get out of your bathrobe or slippers to do it. How's that? Okay, so now we're going to start with the, um, uh, our little stand here. We're going to come around here and work on our stand while we're talking. And uh, I hope this is fun. Do we have any questions, John, as I'm rattling on about why you should be doing these things? Uh, not that I have noticed. All right. So everybody's just sort of dumbstruck with this crazy, what is she talking about? Just, man, she, she's just nuts. Well, anyway, um, yeah, well, anyway, those are some good, you know, good reasons not to have artist block. I'll tell you what, having a nice, neat studio, the late Jack White one time felt that, um, that the best thing an artist could do was have a very clean, neat workspace, and mine certainly could be um, could be neater. Uh, uh, some, uh, if you want to just be inspired, sometime go to Pinterest and Google artist studios and see what some some lucky ducks have got for an artist studio. I'm telling you what, some people have ocean views. They have the most sterling looking artist studios, and it's very inspiring. And of course, if you wanted an ocean view, you don't have to have one. You could just paint one, you know, on one wall. Just saying. You could have any old kind of view you wanted, even if you just had four walls. Now we're going to take a little burnt, little bit of purple to our uh, burnt uh, sienna, and we're going to make this little dark area here. These, let's put these two colors together. We want a little bit dark under this part right here. But we're layering on. This has got to be done in layers, so we're just putting. We're kind of just putting in our first coat of um, paint because we've got other stuff. Now let's go back to our. Um, uh, our blue and, and brown back, back outside color and just come around here and kind of lose the snow that we that the overspill right there's if you've got any overspill of snow then this is a good time to lose it okay and kind of paint around here this is the blue and ultramarine blue and burnt umber which is slightly different than your um, than your snow globe uh, color background color there you go so it's, so it's a little bit darker see how this is sort of filling in this is really kind of fun isn't it looking nice yeah and uh, so anyway and painting can really it really if you can get into the zone if you allow yourself time to get into the zone you don't kind of take the pressure off of you off of yourself and then the other thing that will help relieve art, artist block is travel um, you know seeing new things sometimes we were talking about this too is that sometimes you'll you'll be uh, you know maybe driving around your neighborhood or whatever taking a walk and you'll see some daffodils or some different flowers and some wild roses or something and they're pretty but they're not saying you don't look at those and go oh man i gotta paint those because you've been seeing those forever and you've been why neighbors had the same flowers for years or whatever the deal is and the, the mall plants the same stuff so nothing's really jumping out out at you but when you travel there's all kinds of things that you can see that would make interesting paintings let's take a little yellow little red make a little orange color here all kinds of interesting things now we're just going to pull a little bit like this back here and make a little bit of a table just to kind of keep these um hey we'd like to thank uh karen for the donation appreciate oh, that very much oh karen thank you so much and you know it came up last time we had nice people donate to us last night and john how did they donate to us because i how do people do that if they want to donate something well Jane, that's, right right there in the chat box right yeah. where they say it says say something right below that there's a little dollar sign you have a smiley face for your emojis and then a little dollar yeah. sign that's called super chat Oh. And when you click on that, it'll come up with a little dialogue box and ask you for how much and if you'd like to say something. You can actually say something in the super chat. Oh, if you do, and then and then then you could if you had a question or something that yeah. you want that the, that the moderators weren't seeing, you want to ask us something. Yeah, I mean that really. I just say, Ginger, you're just it. so crazy with the uh, with the comments about the um, about oh, how yeah, to do uh, artist block. We had a question here. Can I mix heavy body paint with soft body paint on the same canvas? Oh yeah, you can actually. You can. You absolutely can, and you, you you sure can. 
You, you sure can. You can mix it on the same canvas. And in fact, I like the, um, one of the things I'm liking is, um, you know, I don't have all of them, and Golden makes one about half this size. This is a golden fluid white. And, um, and I think, you know, having some browns and whites and stuff in these little, I would do the smaller bottle because I've had this for months and you see how much I paint and I've barely dented it. So it's not like, but sometimes when you need little tiny lines, the fluid is really nice or the soft body is really nice. So sure, you certainly can mix that. And did you know, I've never bought any, but did you know they actually have pens that you can put acrylic ink in? Oh. So like, you know, if you're one of those people that likes lots of detail and stuff, and, you're just sort of struggling with that fine brush. Okay, so you see that? See how we're doing that? See how this is all sort of, you guys kind of, isn't that fun how this is all coming together? So now we're going to rinse that brush and, and uh, pinch it back. And let's put in, a, let's take a little purple and uh, burnt umber now. Okay, make something pretty dark. And let's, let's put in our, um, let's take our, uh, let's just kind of put in our stick, our sticks. You know, we got a branch that's coming. Uh, through here like this. It's not very fat. Well, we'll put snow on it, so don't sweat the small stuff if you get too much. And let's just start with the um, a little branch right there. I figured I'd just do this one. I have to put the snow in, so probably probably, probably jump the gun on the branch, but that's okay. I got my little branch there, so I know that's going. Sure, Cheryl's got a question for you. Yeah. Ginger, I feel limited at times that I can, can't take my acrylics outside to paint. Do you have a suggestion? I really can't afford to buy those longer wet paints. Forgot about what they were called. That's the opens. I think she's well, those golden to. opens, you know, I mean, I've had those forever. You know, I, and I love the golden people, but I don't know that that would make you even any happier. You know what I mean? It certainly didn't make me happy. It's not it, it, what it, I it, thought they'd be. You know, and I just really hate painting outside. i got to tell you, because here's what happens. It's either too humid or too damp or too cold or too hot or something, right? And so whatever happened to in our nice little quiet studio environment isn't happening on the canvas. Other magical things are happening, and you have no idea what. Okay, you don't have your hair dry, you can't really dry the stuff as you go. So, um, so if you just go sit outside on the patio with your extension cord and your hair dryer or something, you, what you want to do is take some paper towels and um, do an accordion fold with them, um, like this. Just take your paper towel, like this, um, and, and you hold, hold, to, hold it, hold it either up or out so we can see what you're doing. Here, here's a little, like this. Do, do it, do, you remember the accordion folds that you make little fans You make the school? fans, yeah. Like, like that. Do it, take a paper towel about these, that strips about this long. Do these little accordion folds like I'm doing here. Well, you get the idea, right? And then, you know, like that, okay? Obviously, you can tell the sock folder isn't here. But, <laughs> uh, <laughs> all right, so you got something like this and you wet it, all right? And then what you do is you put those strips around your paper towel um, you kind of wring them out and then flatten them out around your outside of your palette and put your paint on them. And then what happens is that paint will stay nice and damp and have a little mister and just gently mist every once in a while, mist your paints. You should be fine. I was painting out in Haiti with the, um, I did that trick. If you haven't seen that, teaching Andrew to paint, that's one of our videos on YouTube. And we just did that. We came right off the cruise ship and, and met Andrew, our, one of our students, uh, who takes you know on, online uh, academy courses and surprised him. And he met me in Haiti. And we, uh, I taught him how to paint clouds and in person, up close and personal. And boy, can he paint clouds now. Anyway, the upshot of it was that we did that. And that was hot, man. That was like 80, 90 degrees, probably closer to 90 and windy. And it, 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 that paper towel trick works like a champ, OK? All right, so while we're doing that, let's take a little white and a little phthalo blue, okay? And that's too bright, so let's put a little burnt, a uh, little tiny bit of burnt sienna in it so it's not so it's not too circus blue. How about a little ultramarine with that? Now, a little more white. There we go, a little more burnt sienna. Kind of graze it out, okay? Now, let's just uh, come in here like that, and let's just get our first layer of snow. Let's come in here like that, and we'll kind of sneak that behind here like that. We'll put other colors on here, but we'll we'll start with a little snow here and our snow globe. And our our little tree has to go over, the little branches have to go over that. So you're just going to have to remember where they went and put them back, okay? I think you can do that. And let's see, where's my picture? So I can see what I'm looking at. All right, so we're coming under here like this, kind of sneaking up the side of our snow globe. Hey, kinda. Andrew's in the house. Hey, Andrew. Boy, can he really, he can really... Um, He's got those clouds down. He's now. got those clouds down. But I'm telling you, he was there. He'll tell you that um, that the paint stayed wet. So, and we had no hair dryer or anything. I mean, we managed to make that whole thing work. So, 
it's pretty good. Now let's take a little bit of white and come on top of that like that. So anyway, those are some things. Travel, because like for instance, one of the things that I saw when I was getting off the dock, speaking of Andrew, when we were getting off the dock uh, from the boat, there was these uh, waves that were hitting these rocks on the shore. And they were just gorgeous. And John took some pictures of those. And that will be inspiration for another painting. When you travel, what happens is you see, you see the world a little differently than maybe the people that live there. Okay? Because it's all new and beautiful and exciting to you. And um, it's a wonderful thing to be able to um, uh, find new venues. Even if you just travel out of town for a couple hours and go visit the next town over or something. Uh, you want to be inspired to paint, go see something new. Okay, that helps with artist block. I think that's great advice, don't you, John? I do. Okay, Absolutely. so so while this snow is kind of doing its thing here, right? Or, uh, this is kind of fun here. Um, did you ever find our die for our trivia game? Did you look in your bowl? Was I supposed to? I would start there. Wow, you found it. Look There's at that. There's a slot folder where, where you put it, where it belongs. Wow, look at that. All right, we're <laughs> going to play a quick, a quick bit of art trivia as we're painting some bit. stuff in. All right, bit. there we go. Number five. Ooh, and that was one we said we weren't throwing the other day. Yeah. All right, that's a house. So we're going to, while John's looking for a question, we're going to make a little orange color like that with red and yellow. And I'm going to pinch off the brush. And we're going to come up here on the top of this. And now we're going to start using just the side of the brush. This is dried enough. We're going to just start almost, well, it's not even the side. It's almost the flat of the brush, rubbing it over this other brown. See, like that? And we're going to suggest that um, it's the paint's a little lighter. So you put the paint on, wipe it off. Like I want it a little bit lighter on the edges, like that, like that. And then we're going to come down here and do the same thing on this one. We're going to start to make these wood tones on our picture. I'm just going to layer this all in. So you put the paint on the brush, wipe it off like that, and then just uh, the lightest, we want it lightest on the wood tones. And kind of just drag the brush kind of flat, and it sort of skips over there and um, allows for this sort of nice tonal quality to happen. And um, I might even put a little bit, just take a little tiny bit and rub it in here like this. I don't want to, this to be, um, I want this dark, but not that dark. Okay, this little dark area here. All right, and I'm going to do it again. Let's see, let's come down here on the side. Now, that's what happens when you don't wipe your brush. That's okay. I wanted you to see it if you don't wipe it. That's why you want to put the paint on, tap it off on a rag, and then go. If you don't have enough paint, when you do that, you can always go back and get more paint, but that's a good trick is to learn to do that. So let's just come here like that and just go ahead and put the downside. Now, if you guys are liking these uh, snow globe paintings, I wanted to say that we've got um, a ton of a ton of a these ton. on our website. No, 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 don't see a ton. Oh, I, 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 I lied. Ton. Maybe three or four. <laughs> <laughs> I couldn't find them all. Oh, John couldn't find them all. But, I mean, here's one. This was a snow globe from our Wave and Water Master Class. Is that, that cool? One. This is the lighthouse. Now, you see, you can have a whole snow globe collection. And guess what, you guys? It doesn't have to be a winter scene in a snow globe. Those of you who remember the old days when people used to collect those, sometimes there'd be summer scenes in a snow globe. I don't know why it was so snowing on summer scenes, but you know you could buy that them like that. That was the dandelions. The dandelions or whatever, right? So there's we have those. That that's the, the snow globe, and then we have. Uh, did you find any other? What was the one I was working off of today? I should bring that one. That wasn't this one. Um, isn't it right in front of you? No, that's the same one. That's the, the part. Yeah, well, that's what it was. Was I it, found the two. I found both of those. Yeah. And there's a little six, six, six by well, eight. Well, we have one. some others too. We have a bunch of others. You'll just have to look. John couldn't find them, but we have others. Hey, we'd like to uh, thank Sherry for the donation. She made a nice comment. Oh, what'd you say, Sherry? What'd she say? I like you guys to know how much I appreciate what you do and specifically what you have done for me. Ginger, you are truly my favorite artist with a heart. Oh, thank you. Thank you very much, Sherry. Because, you know, we're, I'm just talking to a camera here. I have no <laughs> idea who any of you guys are. And that no, we're around really the world. And I have to believe. This is all make-believe. I have to believe someone's out there that hears this. I mean, you know, this really, I don't know if you could do this without a great imagination. We had somebody write us from Israel um, and say it's really hot in Israel yesterday. They're so glad for the snow scenes. And I'm thinking, man, I mean, what's the technology that we live in? Doesn't that blow you away that we're reaching, I know, we're reaching Sweden and Germany and Russia and Australia, all, the way Australia all over the world. All right, now you see how I keep layering the stuff up here to see? Hey, did you ever want me to ask a question? Or yeah, was, go ahead and or ask or you were just question. trying to entertain us. 
Well, no, I'm just trying to partake in what we're doing here. You know, I want people to understand how I'm painting it. All right, so move on. <laughs> Ask your question, John. What was the name of the group of artists who surrounded Andy, Andy Warhol? The Factory, The Hive, The Clan. So apparently Andy Warhol had a group of artists who surrounded him. I guess it would be his, um, what do they call those guys? Sycophants? What? No, what? I don't know. <laughs> So what was the name of the group of artists who surrounded Andy Warhol? The Factory, The Hive, The Clan. Gosh, that's so interesting. I, I, well, I, my art agent's sister used to hang out with Andy Warhol in New York. Well, did she belong to The Clan, The Hive, or The Factory? It, it, was, never, the factory. it was never mentioned. Kim I don't Sims know. says Factory, Kathy says Factory. James I, says factory. Really? Becca Boo says factory. Gail's <laughs> laughing at you. I've never heard of that. I don't Zo know. I'm Zoe just... says hive. Marty says clan. Giovanni says hive. Uh, it, it, some, of us, some of us want to say groupie. <laughs> um, Carol said the factory with groupies. Yeah, so I'm with Carol, man. I think it's, it's groupies, man. Here's a little orange for the, um, the little beak here. Let's do that Jerp, over on this one, too. Jerp says the factory was the studio. Jennifer says the hive. Peggy's the factory. Would you be making another snow globe? Yes, you will eventually. Yeah, we're, we, we, like, we, we you can collect We have these. so much stuff to do. We, we, do, we, do <laughs> we have more snow globes than this. I'm sorry we couldn't find all the examples because we've got a lot. <laughs> and we, do, we release a new one every Christmas. But, you know, we might probably do more of them. This so year. we have we have more of these. Honestly, we do. I'm I'm just so sorry. They're on Pinterest too. If anybody wanted to know. Here's a little bit of yellow, Linda factory, red, and Lynn orange. Factory, I guess. Oh, Lynn, you're just doing what everybody else is saying. Okay, so I I don't know. I have no clue because I thought the guy's stuff was peculiar, to to be kind, right? And um, I thought he was peculiar. So I'm probably, I just don't know, John. I think that's very interesting. Okay, no well, idea. the correct answer is the factory. The factory. For all those members that said the factory, give yourself 1,000 points on your way to 10 billion points. What do you get when you get 10 billion points? Well, you have to do it before the end of the year, and um, <laughs> that's still a secret. <laughs> Sammy hasn't told us. You know how he is. Yeah, uh-huh. Well, Sammy thought these were robins, so Sammy's unreliable. <laughs> don't listen hey, to me. Hey, 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 don't be picking on the bear. <laughs> and he said, Sammy says, now you'll notice that I've got this sort of color for the, kind of an oranger color for the, the for our, um, uh, kind of a yellow-orange color for our bird here. You see that? And uh, we'll just bring the color down, and we'll put his mask on. We'll just bring it all down like that, and then we'll put his little mask on. All right, so you see we've got the first kind of coats on there. And Those then as long nice. as I'm into this yellow-orange color for the bird, now we're going to come back, see, a little bit more yellow, and come back and lighten up the edges of this again. This is a, what we talk about layering, and it's a dry brush kind of layering, and you just barely touch it down, drag it across, and it will start lightening up here like this. It'll start lightening up the... Um, you'll, you'll be amazed. That it, it, it just starts to add layers and layers of kind of light stuff on your on your wood. If you get it too yellow, put a little more orange with it. And this is really kind of drag, dry brush this across like that. So see how that, see how pretty that's getting with the, with the almost mahogany wood tones that you're getting. And this is all kind of done with layers. All right. So let's just pull that like that and dry that across. Okay. So, so I think that's pretty good. Um, let me just, if, I'm, if you're going to go into um, snow color and you're using one brush, it's probably a good idea to rinse the brush. Okay, I think. So, um, all right, so I think I need some more snow here. So I'm going to just take a little bit of white and time, some of that blue color. Now I'm going to add some highlights to the snow. All right, we're going to say that there's a little hill here like that. And, uh, you know, you don't, have, don't get too technical. Don't worry about the small stuff. You're just going to say that there's some highlights going on here to this. And then I suppose um, that's a good place to do that. And as long as you're doing that, take a piece of chalk. If you need to dry it, you can. And uh, get re ready to do a nameplate here like this. And I, I just signed mine. If you notice in the picture, 
I just signed mine Cook, but you could put the name of the year. This is if you're doing a, a yearly a collection of snow globes, you could do the year like 2017 and the date or something. You, you, I'm telling you, these are really nice as, as collector's items. And we're talking about it. Um, you might want to consider when you're if you're get, get really getting into the snow globe stuff, you might want to consider doing them as a gallery wrap. Okay, like this. You know, get, buy a canvas as a gallery wrap and really make these. Uh, you know, an eight by ten gallery wrap, and really, you know, kind of paint around the sides, and and really have a nice snow globe collection. Just you know, just every once in a while, just paint one. If I'm, I'm what I'm showing you right here is, um, this is our new release. This is our new release for um, our members. This is part of our Christmas in July special. This is the Toy Story. I'm gonna just let this dry for a minute. This is the Toy 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 Toy, toy Store <laughs> to our Village collection. Okay, so people are going to toy, what toy the shop. We changed it to. Toy shop, that's right. Because we have so much trouble with toy store. Toy store, yeah. <laughs> and and, have and people say, well, what is the village collection? Well, the first village collection I ever released was a gallery wrap on YouTube. It's still available. This is the hotel. What you do is these are like little sculptural pieces, these little, um, you know, gallery wrap canvases. And you can put them on, you can stand them up like this, um, you know, on a shelf, or you can hang them on the wall. And we have a whole village, all right? So the idea is that you collect the whole village, all right? And this is the newest release, and this is a special one for any of our members of GingerCookLive.Gallery. We've got a special release on this, and I'll let John tell you about it. And I just wanted you to see the collection. Now, I just did, I did the, the, some of my samples just on flat pieces, but you can see it. We have the uh, flower shop. You saw the hat shop. We have a bookstore. We have a bicycle store. We have a pet shop. So, and we'll be adding more to our series. But this is the, the, um, the first one. Can put you plenty of time to paint it. I love it. We went all the way around the sides. Oh, look at the giraffe on the edge. Isn't that cute? Cute giraffe. And, uh, you know, you notice there's a little bit of, you know, dirt in the snow and so forth. We've got a sled, a teddy bear, a train, um, a, a little tree in the background, and we've got a little um, nutcracker. It looks just alarmingly like John, doesn't it? <laughs> and, uh, uh, you know, notice all these ones have, the, you know, the flowers on the trees. Now we've got the snow coming down in the icicles. And I think this is really cute. So if you're uh, uh, one of our village collectors, uh, how are they going to get this, John? Okay, what you've got right now is, let, let's uh, let, let, the, let, let the boys bring the special sign up. You, if you are a non-member, you can join right now for seven days for four ninety five, dollars Which is half price. Half price. And if you are a member, you can get the toy shop... <laughs> Have to stop and think. And once you become a member, you can get the toy shop for. You have to be a you have to either be a monthly member or a yearly member to purchase the toy shop for four ninety five. And the link. Let me see if the link is still in my. Okay. This was just yep. a, it's kind of like we I gave just a, put the link we had in a there. we had a gift for our members and for our non members. Our non members, where you can try us for a week for four ninety five half price, and that's uh, accessed over three hundred videos, which is a terrific deal, and uh, you get know, as many as you want to do in the week. And then if, um, if you want access to personal art coaching and some, you know, fun help. And, um, you know, uh, every week we, uh, we release a new video, too. Um, it's like four, new, four to five new videos every month. We keep adding to this big library of videos. Yeah, currently we have over 300 lessons up there. Yeah. So anyway, if you count this is in YouTube, got. we probably have 450 lessons available. Yeah. So th that's kind of one of the reasons that you might, you know, want to consider, you know, giving us a try. In fact, somebody joined last night and didn't hear the bullet, and we refunded her $5. You're going you to know? have to move those off and move, rearrange yourself. Do I need to come over and help you? Oh, uh, no, good? I'm good. I've got this. Okay. All right, I'm moving this. All right, this was cute, though, right? You know, got, but I'm just saying, you might want to consider, you know, if you had some bigger canvases and you were really into snow globes, you might want to consider doing something like this with the gallery wrap. Might be very pretty, particularly if you were going to use these just as one time a year decorations. Are you just going to have a, you know, maybe a wall or some way? I think Andrew did a, has a whole shelf that he's devoted to his uh, village collection. And the thing about the village collection is you personalize it. You make the hotels your own. You personalize those little ha those little houses, and we're going to uh, those little shops, and we're going to have more of those as we go on. So it's just uh, this pretty well squared away as far as our. Let me see. Yeah, the right, like, like, right, like this. You're happy with this? I can live with that. You live with that? All right. So, see, we gave all that time to dry, which is good. Yeah? Yeah, there and, we uh, go. So, anyway, this was one of those days. We thought Christmas in July might be sort of fun. All right. So, that's had a chance to dry. So, now what we can do is cad red medium is one of those colors that's a little bit brighter. Do you see that? See how much brighter that red is? 
don't know if you guys can see it, but we're going to put a little cad red medium on our bird right like this. And then I want to take a little bit of ultramarine blue and naphthal crimson and make almost like a, it almost as a, um, like a lizard crimson. You know, it's almost a blue, uh, pur purpley red. And I want to do a little shadow under the wing here, okay? and then make it a little bit darker with a little bit of, say, even purple, and then right under the wing, the very darkest part, while well, this is still wet, but a little purple on the brush. So we've got a little dark shadow under this wing. We've got a little dark shadow right here. Then I want to take it, just brighten this tail up like that, where this is going, because this little tummy is right here. Now, what you can do is take a little bit of yellow on your brush, and then just come here, right where that is. You see how I'm outlining the bird? Well, he doesn't really have any yellow, so what you have to do is just blend the red into that yellow. And what I want to do is, because the background is so dark, I just want the um, it to be a little bit lighter right there. Okay, so we got that little bird there. And then I'm going to rinse my brush because I'm changing into yellows. Now we're going to take a little bit of titanium white and yellow. You could use cad yellow light, too. And you want to come here on the bottom part of this little bird on his tummy. Now, as you see, I put the paint, and I'm going to pinch the brush. I'm going to use the side of the brush and just sort of melt this up into his, t like, about like that. And this is where it's a little bit lighter. Then we'll take a little yellow oxide, maybe. Okay, that's nice. And how about a little bit of cad red medium and cad yellow? And let's see, we want a little tiny bit of orange right here. Then use the side of your brush and sort of melt these colors together. Make little circles, kind of like the way you blend clouds. There's a little bit of blending going on here, like that. Okay. All right, so that bird looks reasonably happy to me. And then there's a little bit of burnt umber here on the outside of him where you might see some, um, maybe a little more red with it. You might see a little bit of, um, a little more orange maybe. You might see a little bit of his wing like that. Okay, that's going to come right like this. And let's, let's get some more orange here on this part of his feathers like that. Okay, coming down. Her feathers, I guess it's hers, isn't it? Okay. So now that we've got that going, um, I think I feel fairly confident that we can uh, put the snow on, on the branch. So let's just take a little bit of sort of a light blue color. The snow, for those of you, we, we talked about this last night. Uh, what did we do last night? Do we remember? This is our video last night, which was really cool. We, taught, we did this little uh, this bridge in the snow, and then we used glazing medium to get these colors on the snow, which is not the only way to paint snow, but this was a cool lesson last night. And we talked about how snow, you know, when it falls, if you want, and live in one of those climates where you've never seen it, you, you don't want snow underneath the branch. It's got a, it's, it, it snow catches anything that's facing up toward the sky. Just kind of remember that. And it do, it's not neat. It's all lumpy. And because it's just like anything else, it's, it's not even. So, you know, there might be more snow in some places on the branch and less in others. And maybe up in here like that, that's very lumpy. And then here we go. And now as we come up here like this, we will just take this light um, branch here and just go ahead and, and we, we could do a smaller brush. But you see, even this, this bristol on brush really does a nice job of... Um, how many cookies did we decide this was? This is a two or it's about a two and a half cookie lesson. You okay, know, took is... two cookies with some crumbs. Yeah, because I mean, because you can trace it on. Now, if you had to, if you had to draw draw it freehand, then it might be three cookie. But I think this is basically there's nothing really uh, tricky about this. Now, one this is where this is handy. Remember we talked about this um, this kind of liquid paint. This is where it can be very handy because what you do is you put a little of that out and a little uh, um, switch to a um, like a little tiny liner brush, a little round, short liner brush, like, um, say that, okay? And then wet that, reshape it, twist it. You guys remember to twist it, right, when you pull it? Twist and pull. Could you see that? Do I need to do it again? Could you do it a little bit more over to your right, I think? This way? <laughs> that way? Yeah, I think, yeah. Yeah, yeah, okay, right here. So, yeah, no, right here. Do you yep. see that? Yep. So it's in the towel, and I'm twisting it and pulling it out, so it goes to a point. In the old days, we used to do that with your mouse, but then they talked about, you know, maybe that wasn't such a good thing. I'm still living, but, you know, perhaps others aren't, so <laughs> just don't do that. Use the towel. All right, so now I've got a little bit of this white here, and I'm going to come over. Here's my next coat of paint. See, that's on top of this, okay? And uh, I'm going to just come. We had the little blue shadow 
And now I'm just going to use this little tiny brush. And notice I'm holding it. I want to see how I'm holding it. I'm holding it between my middle finger and my thumb. This finger is not tight, and this wrist is not tight. All right, just want to mention that. I, every once in a while I watch, when I'm giving private lessons, I'll watch how somebody holds the brush. And that can make all the difference in the world about how things are coming out for you. You've got too tight a grip on your a brush. And if you haven't seen that video that we have called Can Your Brush Do This? Sometimes people really struggle with painting things, and it's not them, it's their brush. And I'll be the first one to just throw a brush across the room if it's not behaving well. You know, boom. Just, the, you know, I mean, I, 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 my brush has got to really do what I want them to do, and if they're not cooperating, they're gone, and they wear out. And this is the other thing. It worked fine last week, and this week, maybe you left it in water, maybe you didn't. I don't know. I'm not, not, nobody's counting, you know, saying that, right? But anyway, just think about that. You know, have a nice, you know, have a better brush. And all right, so we're going to take a little bit of white here and uh, just use it, roll it, do the tips, hold it. When it's flat like this, I'm straight up, almost straight up over it. The harder you push, the fatter the line, okay? Okay, and there you go. So we're going to just say that this is, here's some snow. All right, like that. I like, that. I like that snow. Yeah, well, if you put the shadow on and then you put the highlight on, it's just pretty, it's pretty easy like that. Okay, so there's not, again, there's not a lot to, everybody was thinking this was really pretty tricky. And um, I'm not saying it couldn't be tricky, but it's not that tricky. All right, so let's just say that we've got another little branch coming this way. Now, see how this brush is sort of frayed on me? Do you see that? I do. So I'll pull it, pull it to a point because, um, and roll it. Now I'm going to just come up here like this. And as I push harder, I'll just make the branch wider. So there's a couple of ways. You can start really thin. And it's for some people, now this is really important too. For some people, it's easier to pull down than it is to push up. And for some people, you want to go sideways. So don't be afraid to just spin this canvas around. Tell, uh, it doesn't matter whether I do it a certain way. It's, it's how you do it. If you're left-handed, you may be doing something else. So get in the habit of being able to, ready to do that if you need to. Okay, so you just you know you can get a little bit clever with this and I think almost I'd like a branch going up here like that. I didn't do it in the other one, but I think it could have a branch here like this. Okay, and then just there like that. Maybe we'll put a little bit of blue underneath that. Okay, like that. There you go. All right, so there's that one. So we got our branch. Oh, wait, here's a question. Yeah. Miss Angie had some paint dry on her uh, ruby satin brush. So sad. I soaked it in 90% alcohol on a brush only, and the paint came out, and the brush is just like new. Not sure how often you can do that. What's the stuff that we use? We, we've got this, uh, the, uh, there's this, there's this brush cleaner by Winsor Newton that the Liquitex guy told me about. And he just swore by it. So um, I, I, I have saved a lot of brushes. Yeah, and, and John's got it over there. Maybe you can grab it and I'll show it. Um, you know, again, nobody pays us to say this stuff. We just tell you how it is, right? And let's see, I want a little bit lighter beak here, a little bit of orange, lighter yellow beak here than I had here. So we're going to come up here and do our beak here. Yeah. You've had this quite a while. Oh, I've had this for, it just lasts, you know, this lasts you forever. Because you can, you can just, you can cover it and use it again. You don't, Throw it out after you've used it. Yeah, this is Brush Restorer and uh, Cleaner by Winsor Newton. This is really good stuff. And you just put a little bit in a, you know, tiny, just enough to, you know, cover your brush, leave it sit there for a while, and that really works, okay? It works great. I've saved and, several uh, brushes. Yeah, it does, it, does, it does work. And the other thing is that Winsor, Ruby Satin Silver people, the Silver Brush people, not just the Ruby Satin, the Silver Brush people, that's the name of the company, Silver, um, their, their big thing is to... Um, to put the to put the um, to put the brush in, um, uh, in boiling water, dip it in boiling water and reshape it. Um, and I've done that too. If the brush is worn out, this works. If the brush is not worn out, if the brush is worn out, then of course it doesn't work. Okay. So I want to take a second and just dry this before I put the mask on, you guys, for the birds and the last detail. Can we do that? John, John, do you have anything great you want to, do you have any show and tell or anything? Um, I'm going to have to answer that in a lion. No, no, I didn't. Didn't get a chance. 
Okay. Well, go ahead and say something. I'm going <laughs> to <laughs> do this. <laughs> say something. Anything that comes to mind. Yeah. Okay. All right. Uh, uh, you know, say something lovely. All right. Lovely. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. Um, a couple of people are commenting that they can't get to the website. I think it was Nicole is having problems with the contact us. Uh, Carol, I believe, says the website's running slow. I will look into this after the show. I can't check all that stuff. Um, I figured it was running slow on my side. It's still coming up, but it is running a little bit slower, but I figured it's because we were broadcasting. I usually don't bounce around on the website as much as I have tonight. Well, that was awfully quick. Well, it didn't need to dry it much. We just needed to dry it. Now, if this is where somebody said, when would you use black paint? I guess you could use black paint for this. We're going to use purple uh, could you and square that up, please? Square what up? This one? Thank you. Yeah, sure. I'm, I'm going to just miss this, too. We're going to use uh, purple and ultramarine blue and get this dark color for his mask. They're like little bandits, okay? And let me just uh, get my picture down where I can see what I have going here. See? you're gonna We're going to come across the top of his eye here like this. They've got like a little... Really, it's like a mask. Let's see, a little bit more purple with that. Maybe some red, too. There we go. Just, red. Yeah, because the red will just. There we go. I want this dark. There you go. Now you come around the, the the beak. Like this, it's a little bit wider under here, and then stops like that. And then there's a little line for the beak. We're gonna come back here with the mask on the eye. Is that cute? And then we're gonna do the same thing over here. She's got um, she's got like almost a little almost like a little triangular point going up on the top of here, and then you've got the mask. Again, this little kind of eye shape. Here's our, this is the, this nifty little water thing. I got that with them um, when we were in Haiti from Andrew. Andrew's got a, a gift shop where a lot of the local artisans that live in Haiti um, create beautiful things. And we got that, and that's what we use for that tiny little water thing. And then it's got this nifty little lid. How cute is that, right? So anyway, um, the crystal is, came from someone else, and we have that in there because we like it. And then, all right, so we're going to say that this is the, the beak's going this way, and uh, that this is coming under the beak, and I think I have to widen that beak a little bit. So this is kind of going sideways. That's the edge of her, uh, her neck there, and I don't quite have her beak correct, so let me fix that. I have it going down, and it needs to go um, out like this. It needs to come out like a carrot, like this out from under here, and I just didn't quite get, get the shape right there. But you know, this is acrylics, so all is forgiven because you can just fix anything. Don't you love that? You can just come up here and fix it all. So here it is across there, and let's bring this mask out a little more, like a little triangle here like that, okay? Now, once you do that, you see me rinse the brush, then I'm gonna take some white, and I'm gonna say, here's a little eye right here like that. A little dot of an eye, and we're going to give him a little eye here like this. Okay. Then we're going to take some purple and come back in the center of that, or kind of in the side, and make it a little smaller. So just, there you go. So you barely see that eye, see? Kind of looks scary for a second. Well, yeah, they do, and then you, but you've got to put that back here. So now we've got to come back up here on the top of her top notch here and make sure we've got this covered. Here, here's a question for you from Becca Boo. Yeah. Should we paint dark colors first, then light, or light, then dark? Any advantages, disadvantages? Well, the, basically, you want to paint the farthest thing first and come forward. And it may, or be, it may be a dark color, it may be a light color. So that's the rule. For instance, in watercolor, you have to save out all the white, figure out where all that's going to be, so you can't change your mind. Not, for instance, <laughs> I want another branch, right, coming down here, like this somewhere, okay? Maybe off of this. Now, um... So if I want another branch coming this way from here, um, if I was in a watercolor, I'd have to have known that <laughs> before I started. <laughs> what I love about acrylics is that you don't have to have a lot of planning. You can paint as you go and just see how it works, right? Okay, so I want some little branches coming this way, like that. And I couldn't have done that if that was a watercolor, okay? So, yeah, so that's the, that the farthest things first come forward. And... Um, there was this artist named Lord Layton uh, that lived in the you know the 1920s, 
He did, I think he did Flaming June, some of his stuff. I'll have to show you pictures of his work. Really beautiful stuff. Guy was a master artist. Just make, put the rest of us to shame, really. He, he would paint these scenes of ancient Rome and lions and people in togas and people sitting around, you know, you know, luxuriating in the nice scenes of marble and columns and all this stuff. And he, he, was, he was the only oil painter that I know that painted from uh, uh, light to dark instead of dark to light. He, was, he, he sort of made that sort of famous. But mostly even oil painters, they paint from, um, they paint from uh, uh, light to dark, or dark to light, rather. But you really, the whole thing is, the trick is, it's the farthest thing away. So if you need to, um, there you go. Okay, so there's our, there's our birds. They're looking a little mean. Yeah, they kind of are. I wonder why. <laughs> it could be where I've got the... <laughs> I don't know. It could just be me being a sock folder and all. I, I don't want to say anything out of turn, but well, then quiet. <laughs> Keep the peanut quiet. I couldn't quiet. help it. I mean, the, she's really looking aggressive. She is. Well, maybe we'll just make a less of let's. We'll just tone her eye down a little bit there. Oh, that helps. Yeah, just tone her eye yeah, down that, just no. a little bit. That, that, well, that's good. That's a good lesson there. So the, you know, the whiteness just, just really. Okay, like so she, we're gonna we're gonna take a little bit of, of paint here, and we're gonna put some little feeties here, curling around the. This is what this is for. Curling around the um, the branch like that, little feeties, and she's got some she's got some feeties going this way like that, like that, like the word feeties, little feeties. Okay, so she's got some little feeties. Now, all right, so where are we with this? Well, this is the, this is the kind of thing. Now what we need to do is we're going to just rinse that. You don't want to leave these brushes in water because when they sit in brush in water, they bend. So we're going we're gonna to get our other brush out now and see if we can't um, make sure we have enough of paint going where we want it. I think I need a little bit light, wider right here. I just There's my outline, and I'm just going to give her a little more tummy. <laughs> There we go. That's nice. See, just sometimes those little kind of things are good. And let's take a little bit of cad red medium and give it the second coat right here. And a little bit here on the top notch. And let's get this going back a little further like that. Okay? Like that. And let's bring that up closer. Oh. Okay. Alicia took the bird's mouth and turned them up a little bit to make them happier on hers. Well, that's a good idea. <laughs> then listen, you'll have to show us how you did that on Facebook. We'll all copy you, right? <laughs> Just... We're shameless that way. You got a better idea. Let's all do what she did, right? She knows <laughs> Thanks what for she's sharing, doing. right? Yeah, the we'll take that. The male looks worried now, according to Karen. Well, he should be. She's got all the food, you know. <laughs> all right, I'm going to take a little bit of yellow and red and make it a little bit orangey right here and just lighten up his chest just here a little bit, just a little bit. We're just slightly okay, like that. Just there we go. Maybe right here on the top of his head there. So just you just got to have a little bit more contrast. Isn't that nice now? I've got that red. Now, what can I do with it here? I can come down here on my, um, uh, just a little bit here, maybe on my uh, table down here. Do I need to put any more color back here? This has had a chance to dry, so this is my next little area, of just kind of playing with our stuff here. Now, here, how about a little bit of yellow oxide and, and that orange color? Let's fill in this nameplate like that. And uh, you might want to measure this to make sure that you've got it kind of even. I'd center it. I don't know if I centered it. I think I did on this one. I can't tell. Is this centered, John? Just need to um, go over a little more. It's, it's pretty close. Pretty close. Sock fold over there, nose. Oh, we just assumed so. you had it turned a little bit. That's all. Well, it's a round thing, isn't it? Right. So it just, you know, just turned it one way or the other. Okay. So then what you want to do on one side of that is that you want to, you know, this is one of those little secrety things here. You want to have a little bit of a shadow, see, like that, to make it look like it's kind of standing out above it. Okay, so get rid of your chalk. And then on the other side, make it a little lighter with a little bit of white, maybe, and yellow oxide or something. Make this edge, right, like this, a little lighter, see? Then maybe just even on the top of that, you could do that. Then take your brush, pinch it, and just sort of a little bit, more yellow gold here, just sort of push that in. You, I like the color. That I had a little bit more of an orange cast to that, and I'm going to add that because I think that's pretty in here. Okay, and then you could write whatever you want on that. I mean, that's that's how you personalize this whole thing. Okay, so I know any of that color up in here, I think we're pretty good. I think we could lighten up his his um, 
speak. Now, I had that big speech about the brush, but you've got to be able to find it again if you're not putting it off. There it is. All right, so I want a little bit lighter yellow on the beak up here, so I'm going to just lighten his beak up just a hair like that. Um, maybe not that yellow, but just slightly lighter than it was. Okay. Okay, like that. Let's lighten Is that, her. um, somebody up mentioned the, the yellow that's over on the edge there? That's cad yellow medium. No, And this is yellow oxide. <laughs> on your painting. There's the lines. Is that, is that the lines from when you drew it? Yeah, the okay. yellow here is the lines from when I drew it, drew it, but that will come off um, when I wipe it. Oh, tomorrow, that'll come off. Yeah, you dry it completely. You, you dry it completely, and you can wipe off the yellow. Okay, so here's a little bit. Let's put a little more color like that. Nothing wrong with a little bit of color here. Okay? All right, so we've got those are our little birds. Now, what, what we can do here, for instance, I, you know, here was a, I think this was a yellow line here, but let's just say that this was another... Um, branch coming this way. How come it's buffering? What's oh, buffering? Oh, we crashed. Who crashed? YouTube. We're down to 167. It just crashed. And does that mean no one can see us? Nope. It just died right here at the end. We can finish it off and do like we did last time, but it, it, it totally crashed once again, just like it did the other night. It's dropping every frame. So will it come back? Nope. Not this low. Is broadcasting 165 kilobytes. Yeah, but I'm not done. <laughs> and I will tell the YouTube gods that and let them I'm know. I'm not done, John. I, well, you can finish it. We'll do it like we did last time. But Tim, thank you very much for the donation. You can, hear, can you guys still hear us? It's crashed and burned. We're going to save it just like we did last time. So you'll finish it off. Keep talking as if you're teaching them. All right, now I'm going to take a little bit of this light color here because we need to put um, um, we need to put the, the the highlights on our globe here, like that. So we're going to just come here like that with a little bit of white, like this, and do something here. Um, this is where mixing white can be very handy. I'm just going to take a little mixing white, I, and I couldn't find it on the other one, but this is that's your transparent white. And look, because that that will just what you want to say is that like here's a you want to indicate this is a glass, right? So you're going to come up here like this. Ooh, too much. Let's just pull it like that, right? Just come over here like that. A little mixing white like this. To indicate that you've got a snow globe going here. Here, let's do this like that. Okay, and the same thing here. We want a little bit more white maybe on the outside of our... You don't, want to, you don't need to outline the whole thing, but it doesn't hurt to... Um, you know, have just a little bit of this reflection. That's all you're talking about. A little bit of reflection. And then the last thing I want to do is I want to put a little snow over some of the birds. Okay? So how what, I'm going to do that is... That's I'm, when you used your toothbrush again? I'm going to use the toothbrush again, but I'm going to have to um, take the rag and shield off everything. Now, I couldn't do that before, but I'm going to just take this and kind of shield my bird because I want it just kind of over this bird's tummy like that. All right, and I'm going to take my toothbrush, and uh, it's been in the water, so I'm going to wipe it off like that, okay? And now I'm going to just put a little bit of water on the brush, tap it off, go back into the thing, tap it off. Now, uh, let's do one test here. Just a tiny bit. You barely want to see this on the bird. You're not trying to hide the whole bird here. We'll do a little bit on her, too, but not much. All right, there, see? Maybe a little tiny bit on this log right here. Okay? Beautiful. All right, and there you have it, you guys. And whatever you write in there, you're just going to, you know, you want to put the nails in, too, if you want to, little dots for the nails, like that. Make sure that you get a little dark outline here. And you can, again, you can erase your chalk uh, tomorrow. Um, you know, after it's all really dry, you know, you can, you know, don't be, don't be afraid to do that. We're just going to darken this up with a little purple here on the sides here like that. And uh, this was really, I mean, I think this is really a lot of fun. I hope everybody had fun doing it. Um, I'm going to think her eye got a little small here, John, when everybody was worried about her being mean. <laughs> um, you can bring it up a little bit. Yeah, there you go. Just, you just need a little bit more of an there eye here go. going. 
Um, it was just pretty aggressive. I don't know, it just, just, it just looked like the, the angry bird. Well, she looks a little bit like the angry bird, I agree, you know what I mean? And just, uh, you know, I suppose every time you'd paint her, she'd be a little different. I'm going to just uh, kind of give her a little highlight on her toes. Okay, I go like that. And uh, I would say that that's a, you know, that's, that's a pretty effective... Uh, uh, snow globe. You know, snow globe. If you want to come back under here and just kind of, uh, you know... Give a little under on the underside of the little branches if you want where it's crossing the snow. If you wanted to, you know, add a few little accents here like that, I think that's kind of fun. But there you go, and it would just I would say this was a very successful little pick piece. I hope everybody had fun painting it, and hope you guys take advantage of our Christmas in July, uh, you know, specials that we're running. Hope everybody enjoys the wood track, wood uh, uh, the toy shop, and. Um, Check out our other snow globes because they're fun to do. And particularly like the, we've got a one with a dolphin. I can't believe we don't have those ones. We did, I know we did a pile well, of snow globes. They're on Pinterest. They're Judy somewhere. Found, yeah, Pinterest, Judy found them on them. Pinterest for this us. Is, again, but you can see what a nice set they make, see? When you do well, this, wait, if you, let kind me, of, you see I can't how zoom out. Let me, let me turn off a couple of things here. Here, I'll move the paint over and I'll just move these like this. Look, look at that. Yeah. See what a nice, uh, see what a nice yeah. set. That makes a nice collection. When you do these, this is our. Um, I think this uh, even like this one a little it. better. Teeny tiny. You know that's got a little more snow on it. Just depends on how mad you no, are. That, with that one you did the um, you did the glazing, right? Yeah, a little bit of glazing on yeah. this one. A little bit of glazing on this one, I think, with the light and everything. But I think I don't know. I think I'm liking. You know, I like that one. It doesn't have as much pink. snow. Yeah, I think I think I'm loving that, and I think these are really pretty. I hope these are a great collections. So thanks for watching, you guys. Hope it was a fun evening. Hope you guys had fun watching us. And uh, if you like in our, uh, if you like snow paintings, remember we've got some great playlists on. Look for our snow playlist on uh, how to paint snow. A lot of different ways to paint snow on uh, on YouTube and also on our ch uh, channel, TinterCookLive.gallery. We've got a ton of great snow paintings, and you want to kind of watch out for those. Uh, this was one of my favorites. This was we did right around Christmas time on YouTube. This one with the park bench and the tree. So. Um, and this would be a pretty scene inside a snow globe, too, by the way. Just saying. Wouldn't that be cute? So, you know, now you know how to make snow globes. Kind of do your outline. Figure out what you're going to put on the inside. Kind of make up something for yourself. And, this, you know, get your collection started early. And no more artist block, you guys. Because you've got all those good reasons why not to do it. Start with a really clean <laughs> studio. With lots of materials and you'll feel happier. All right, everyone, thank you very much for joining us. We're sorry it died there on YouTube, but you've got it live, semi-live on our website. We finished it up there. And I'll turn off Ginger. We'll leave it with those last two guys there. Where's Ginger? There's Ginger's gone. There we go. All right, night, everyone. Bye.